all right so we live again the time is precisely 11 a.m and here we are doing some c-sec maths now this question is bearings the achilles heel of many students is a is a challenge the bearings question so jump into it one time from a harbor hg bearing of two boys s and q are 185 degrees and 311 degrees respectively q is 5.4 s is 3.5 on the diagram kilometers right from each from each nice show the sketch of this information and say the value of the marked angle qhs now i'm sensing that sine and cosine rule are going to come in here both sine and cosine rule so how do we do this now it was told to us that this was 185 and this angle how did how we knew this is 185 because that's the bearing of s from each the bearing of s from each meaning start at each the bear, meaning start at the point h so the bearing of s from h was 185 and the bearing of q from the same h was 311 so i already feel and know how to work out this so this bearing here is 185 now bearing goes like this that's that's 185 and the bearing all the way here is 311 degrees that's the bearing of q from each that's how bearings work right the key is the from so if they say this from that from mean the the, the 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 term that comes after the from is where you're starting from the h where i'm starting from right so 311 degrees we're gonna put that here this is 185 degrees well you we already know how we're gonna get this how we're gonna figure out this angle this angle we'll do a little subtraction so it stands the reason that qhs angle qhs is equal to 311 degrees minus 185 degrees and we end up with 126 degrees yeah that sound good and it looked good too it looking good it's sounding good it good 126 degrees that's one mark we get it let's get the remaining marks five marks we had a we're gonna add a five down for them five marks calculate qs the distance between the two boys we were given this length and that length if my knowledge serves correctly q is 5.4 and 3.5 is s from h so we have a 5.4 here 5.4 and a, what is this 3.5 3.5 um, is h to s and that is in kilometers so if we need to find this sign qs which is for two marks what rule are we going to use are we going to use the sine rule or the cosine rule hey daryl from last year get you already but still passing through good to see you um so we're trying to figure out this length now uh, a clue is anytime you have these lengths and you have the angle in between and they're asking you about this side that's cosine rule that's classic cosine rule so let's apply the cosine rule how does the cosine rule work? anybody remember the formula for the cosine rule um let me bring up the formula booklet this is a booklet that i created for my students that has all the formulas used in CXC maths. You can always inquire about this booklet. And this is the formula sheet given at the front of your paper. So the cosine rule written, just turn to the front of your exam paper and you'll see it like this. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos capital A, meaning the angle A itself. Let's do some labeling. The angle A is here. This is common A. And these two could get a B, B, and C. Let's do some substituting now. So A squared, which is what we're trying to find out here, is equal to B squared 5.4 squared plus C squared 3.5 to B squared minus 2 5.4 by 3.5 multiplied by the cos of the angle, which we just found to be 126 degrees. Now you can write out this whole thing in your calculator and just reach to the next line. But um, traditionally how this is done, we normally record this part and then put minus and then we will call that part because sometimes you get a double negative here and, and little mistakes could happen and take. But let's try to work out the whole thing in the calculator. Zoom in really closely and see if you can um, see what my calculator is doing here. Um, so A squared 5.4 squared plus 3.5 to B squared minus 2 by 5.4 by 3.5 cos of 1. 
26. I'm seeing here an R. That that's a sneaky little R. You all may not be able to see it, but I'm seeing it. It's on my calculator. So that is going to lead me. That is going to lead me. <laughs> that is going to lead me in the path of unrighteousness. As a radiance. If I press that and I write that answer there, I am wrong like a ball. So let me go to mode. Sorry, I don't want to go to mode. I want to press shift and go to setup. Because I'm using a mouse, I actually missed the whole thing and clicked the on button. So I have to type it again. But let me press shift and press setup and change from radiance to degrees. We ready for them now. Excuse me, why is I type this over again? Are y'all getting this number that I got here? I'm getting 63.62828254. All right, all the numbers. I'm still, I didn't find the correct answer yet because I still need to find A is equal to the square root of 63.62828254. So the square root of answer, 7.98. Now let's just check back the questions. When you get your answer, check back the questions So look for like if decimal places was required or anything like that. The distance between the two boys, um, that is it. Well, then we can just hit them that the three significant figures. Two, three significant figures. There's this rule in experimenting that you're not allowed to um, be more significant than the values you started off with. So we had like three significant figures here. We had two there. So this could, this is this is good enough. 7.98 kilometers to three significant figures. So the next part of this question is the toughest part. You need to sit down and figure out this part. Calculate the bearing of S from Q. Firstly, let's go to the diagram. The bearing of S from Q, what are they talking about? Look at the diagram. If I draw the line that indicates north, it will go like this. And the bearing of S from Q, you notice I'm drawing it on Q, on Q. So it will be this angle we're looking at here. Why is it in the chat if you understand that that is the bearing of S from Q? You take the bearing from the north, go down to the line that's pointing towards Q. That's the bearing of S from Q. So that's what we want to find. Huh. And how are we going to find that? So sometimes this bearing question can have your rock back just like, whoa, what are we doing out here, buddy? What are we doing out here? How are we going to find this angle? So the there's some clues that I left and uh, I teach my class as well. Extending and looking for alternate angles or co-interior angles it's what Cointia Angles, which Rahel is putting here, it's from one of my classes, is the is the key to these to cracking these bearings questions. Is the key. So let me see if I can give you a little clue. So if I look at this angle here, this first piece of the angle can be splat, split into two, right? And at least it's flat. Split into two. Alright. So we have think of this as a Q. We have this angle here. That's what I'm highlighting there. And we have also have this piece of angle right there. So if we examine, there's something in maths that looks like this. When you have two parallel lines and a transversal, we call this a transversal across the two lines. This angle here is actually equal to that angle. We call those angles alternate angles. So what we're looking for is a Z pattern where this angle is equal to that angle. That makes sense? So that's a clue. Let me show you if you can see this angle here is the same as this angle here. So if I name this angle X, X here is equal to 126 plus what? I would say plus 5. How did I get the 5? Because this is 185 and this angle add up to 180 degrees. So this angle, and I would probably indicate it in my diagram, is equal to 126 plus 5. So just to make my statement easier, since angles in a straight line equal 180 degrees so what does that mean if i figure out this angle is actually actually 131 degrees all i need to do is find this angle and i'll have the bearing i just need to find the missing angle let's call that y how am i going to find y well we have a triangle taking place here we know this we know this we know this we could figure out that using a rule what is the rule we're going to apply here i'm going to use the next color i'm going to use blue using the sine rule just a reminder the sine rule works like this if i have a a b b c c now notice how it's common c capital c here capital b for the vertex common b for the sign the sine rule says that sine of a over a is equal to the sine of b 
over B and so on. Or I could have it inverted A divided by the sine of A, depends on what I'm trying to find. B is over the sine of B. And also, similarly with C, right? C over the sine of C. They are equal. The ratio of the side to the sine of the angles divided by the side of the angles equal for each side, each angle. All right. So in this case, I actually want the sine of 126. Make sure I'm in degrees still. This is 0 0.35483. I'm going to have a fair deal of significance here. This is the sine of Y. So if, I'm, if I reach here and I'm trying to figure out what Y is, I need to do the inverse. I would be like, Y is equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.35483. Sine inverse of answer, shift. Sine inverse of the answer we just got. And we get 20.8 degrees. So Y is 20.8 degrees and X is 131 degrees so what's the complete angle or the complete bearing of s from q so bearing of s from q it's one of the toughest questions that came is the 131 it was plus the 20.8 degrees so approximately 152 degrees so that brings us to the end of this bearings question. That part was for three marks, and you can see why it was for three marks. There's a, some layers of thinking involved in that question. All right. If you want to do some more bearings questions, if you want to work along with me in bearings questions, we're coming up to bearings in my private class. You could always sign up to the private class. Let me write the number on the screen. Do we have a number on the screen here? Yes, Javish. So um, you can WhatsApp 7840619 to register this, to the Student Hub's premium classes. Or if you want to get your hands on the formula book that i showed earlier you can do that same thing as well what's up this number joining the classes well the registration itself close you can't just enter the class my maths class is like that right now to enter the class you actually need to pay for the whole course it's a package deal so you just pay a one-time fee and you get all the classes all the 30 something classes that i did already you get all the assignments all the solutions all the tutorials um access to all the resources we have in the class you get the formula book free you get the crash course that's coming up as well all of this is under one package price the package price is one thousand tt dollars um for and that's if you're doing one class if you're doing like three class the it, three classes like meaning three subjects we have nearly all the csec subjects that the student have the price drops drastically so um love and blessings enjoy your day until we meet again yeah, Rahul, see you tomorrow. Rahul.